Hi folks, I would like to do a book review on a book that I read some time ago. It's called The Siren Call of Hungry Ghosts, a riveting investigation into channeling and spirit guides. Uh, I, I read this some time back, around about 2004. It wrote a little bit of a review on it from my website. But uh, for those of you that haven't read that, the, those of you who haven't heard of this book, I just thought it would be useful to make this YouTube video because I can highly, highly, highly recommend this book really fascinating read and i've got to say it's right up there with my all-time favorite books now the guy that that wrote this he wasn't a christian he was an author and an investigative journalist his name is joe fisher because of his skepticism as a journalist it makes it all the more fascinating when you see the conclusions that he comes to at the end of his time in examining all this that are very very similar to that of Christianity um, as I say this guy wasn't a Christian but his views and his conclusions really do sound very similar to a Christian view on what the identity of these spirit guides were so um, it, it really is fascinating now, now, during the course of his five-year research, Fisher was led to becoming a regular attendee, really, with a gathering of people interested in all kinds of paranormal phenomena. Now, it was here that he was introduced to a number of these spirit entities, including his own spirit guide, a spirit that claimed to be that of a Greek lady who was actually a former lover of his in a past life that they shared together. Now, Fisher became more and more convinced of the truthfulness of the claims of his guide and the other guides which spoke through the medium, especially since some of the information that was transmitted appeared to be uncannily accurate. Now, as he continued to check the information he was provided with, the geographical data, the historical facts, dates, times, people, places and events in library archives, various places where he could go and study these things doubts did eventually to arise in his mind because it soon became more and more apparent that significant pieces of key information was either extremely conspicuous by its absence or directly contradicted what he had been told earlier fish's doubts grew more so when he measured the claims of his own guide against those of other popular mediums Although the spirits that spoke through the various mediums he met claimed to be in contact with his own spirit guide, much of the information that they provided contradicted one another. As a result of all the conflicting information, Fisher began to feel that these spirits were either at best guessing or at worst deliberately lying. After lengthy, in-depth research and becoming more and more frustrated with the many contradictions and blatant lies of the spirit guides, Fisher challenges the spirits with the findings of his research that he has uncovered. The response of the guides, however, was not to admit falsehood, but rather to be slippery, evasive and downright arrogant and defensive. Eventually, Fisher meets up with a former member of the channeling group, a man called Sanford Ellison, who had previously offered to tell him of the other side of the story of the spirit guides. Ellison reveals that his time with the guides led him into becoming increasingly manipulated and controlled by them, eventually leading to the breakdown of his marriage. He explains to Fisher how the guides demanded more and more of his time, while at the same time poisoning his mind against his wife. He was, in effect, turned into a puppet on a string by them, ready to jump to do their bidding. It was only when he made the break from their control that his former relationship with his wife was restored. Looking back on his dealings with the guides, Fisher was able to see how they worked. As well as resorting to blatant half-truths and downright lies, they used such tactics as flattering their listeners and were highly intelligent masters in manipulation. 
They were slippery and difficult to pin down, able to change the subject when questioned about contradicting facts. They would just switch things. Although they often spoke of the good for humanity, love and forward development, it soon became apparent that their true motives were to simply control and live vicariously through physical beings. Hence the name of the book, Hungry Ghosts. They would feed off people. The final part of the book finds the author still grappling with the question of what exactly the spirit guides were. Enough evidence was gathered to demonstrate that some of the information could not have been gathered by natural means. So conscious fraud on the part of the mediums did not seem to be the best choice of explanation. It seemed that these entities, whatever they were, were not what they claimed to be, i.e. spirits of the dead. Despite them being able to deliver great amounts of supernatural information, they lied about their identities and would be caught out over and over again. Fisher's conclusion, these spirits were lower earthly spirits, lying beings, which were desperate to attach themselves to human beings like parasites. Fisher recognised that others have also come to this conclusion through the ages. He refers to the other historical sources, including the Bible, that identify these spirits as malevolent evil beings, i.e. demons. The epilogue to this 2001 edition of Fisher's book still shows him somewhat haunted by his experience with the spirits and sounding out a personal warning for those who would seek to enter the world of spirit guides and channelers. But in that same year, tragedy was to strike. The publishers of Joe Fisher's book, Paraview Press, explain how the author eventually took his own life after being tormented by the spirits he had been in contact with. The publishers further explain how it is all the more incredible that Fisher took his life as he was known as one who wrote against suicide in a previous book that he had authored. Quote, Troubled by personal problems as well as by the spirits he claimed to have angered in writing The Siren Call of Hungry Ghosts. Joe Fisher took his own life on May the 9th, 2001. End quote. www.paraview.com forward slash Fisher forward slash index dot htm. Although brought up in a family that had some Bible based beliefs, I believe his mother was a Jehovah's Witness, he was not a Christian himself, but rather one who lent more towards New Age beliefs and practices. This is reflected in his other books. One was on reincarnation. Now, as such, he could not be accused of being biased against the practice of mediumship. He started off as a sceptical and objective inquirer, an investigative journalist, eventually to become a believer in the phenomena of spirit contact, but found that the spirits that he was in touch with were not what they claimed to be. His conclusion was that these spirits were real, but lied about their identity. They were demons, lying spirits. Jesus himself said that Satan is a liar and the father of lies. There is a warning here for every person who is either involved or thinking about contacting spirit guides through spiritualists, mediums or channelers. Although a lot of these people might have good intentions and a lot of people who seek them out might be grieving. The truth is it is dangerous. These spirits are not what they claim to be.